In this video, you will learn about DGL's model zoo and how to use model zoo API to load model. What is model zoo? Model zoo is a collection of pre-trained models that can be used out of the box. In deep learning, only half model artifacts is not enough. You must apply data processing routines to pre-process and post-process the data. DGL introduced zoo model concept that combine the model and the translator together. DGL use model zoo to manage zoo model and its versions. In order to better organize models, DGL store models in hierarchical structure. Each model's metadata is stored in DGL repository. The metadata will be used when DGL search for a model. Application describe what model is about. Group ID is used for identifying the publisher and artifact ID defines the family of the model. In this diagram, ResNet is a family that's sharing the same neural network architecture. For each individual ResNet model, it has its own properties, such as how many layers are there, like ResNet 18, ResNet 50, which have 18 and 50 layers, and which flavor of the network it uses, like ResNet V1, ResNet V2, etc. DGL building model zoo stores metadata in a centralized location. But you are not limited to only use DGL's building model zoo. You can create your own model zoo and load your model from anywhere you want. You can even point to a, any location as ad hoc model zoo and DGL will just load models from that location. If you specify the model path or URL in the criteria API, DGL will load the model from there first. And then DGL will use service loader to locate any model zoo implementation that's available in the class path and scan for those model zoos. And the last, DGL will search for the additional locations that defined by system property, ai.dgl.repository.zoo.location. So you can specify multiple locations in that system property. I assume you already know the basic usage of DGL's criteria API. In this video, I will talk about advanced usage of criteria API, which is how to specify where to find the location, customize model name and folder structure, advanced model loading options, parsing argument to translator, multiple engine selection. Load the model directly from building model zoo. Since the model in the model zoo already has translator defined, you don't need provide translator in this case. If multiple model match your search condition, the first one will be returned. The model in the model zoo has different performance and accuracy. To get your desired model, you can use artifact ID and filters to refine the criteria. And you can apply multiple filters to further narrow down your search result. Load model from a URL. When you specify model URL or model file path, the filters will be ignored. A model usually contain multiple files. In current implementation, the URL must point to an archive file. The file, the file extension has to be .zip, .tar, .tgz, tar.gz, or tar.zip. DGL will download the file and unzip it into cache folder automatically when loading the model. So be sure you have access to the cache folder. 
You can find document on our website about how to change the cache folder. After download the model, DGL were looking for the model with the same name as the archive file. For example, if your archive file name is restnet.zip, the DGL will assume there is a model named restnet in the archive. If the model has different name or in a nested folder, you will need to specify the model name. In most cases, you need to provide a translator to the criteria. When you load a model from URL, in most cases, you need to provide a translator to the criteria, unless you bundle the translator factory inside the archive file already. Another common mistake user made is using the wrong format of URL. For example, when you use file protocol, if you use two slash in the URL, although it's a valid syntax, but where it interpret the first pass section as the host name. So be sure provide a correct URL. To avoid such mistake, when you load model from local file system, we recommend use OPT model pass instead of OPT model URLs. And this API support both archive file and folder. And you can use the relative pass as well. When you use folder, DGL directly load the model from there and skip unzip into cache folder. Besides standard URL that's supported by Java, DGL also support JAR, which make it easy for you to distribute your package. You can simply put the model in your JAR file. If you want to use non-standard URL scheme, the easiest way is to implement URL handler, but URL handler is global. It might impact the global JVM behavior other than your module. If you don't want to use URL handler, you can create your own repository to handle your protocol. You can follow DGL's S3 and HDFS extension to learn how to do it. Sometimes, you need to use engine specific feature. When you load a model, you can use OPT options to pass parameter to native engine. For example, in MXNet case, you might want to use EIA accelerator. Then you can use OPT options with MX optimized for. And in the PyTorch, there is a features when you load the model, it's called extra files. You can load extra files together with your model. And in TensorFlow, for TensorFlow 1.x, it doesn't have tag feature. So in order to load the 1.x model, you have to pass an empty tag to the model loading options. If your model follows DGL's pre-processing and post-processing standard, you can use default translator and a pass argument to the translator in criteria to control the translator's behavior. DGL use default engine to load the model. You can define default engine with system property. If you didn't define default engine, the first engine DGL loaded in the class pass will be the default engine. For hybrid engines like Onyx runtime, it doesn't have a capability of NDRA operations you may want to use together with other engines. In this case, you have multiple engines running in the same JVM. You will need to tell DJL which engine you want to use. You will need to tell DJL which engine you want to use to load the model. You may run into model not found exception in your code. You can enable the debug log. In this case, you can enable debug log to see how the model is getting loaded. Or you can use the model zoo list models API to query available models and their properties. You can find the troubleshooting detail in our documentation. Thank you for your watching.